Knuckles the Echidna was originally created with- Please don't blast me if I'm saying Echidna wrong- You know what? I'm just gonna look it up now so you guys don't get mad at me. Echidna. Echidna. I was saying it right. Echidna. Echidna. Okay, I was saying it- What's up guys? Omni here. You guys know how it goes. Another day, another video. Last night I tweeted, I sleep. What recent news topics, tweets, videos y'all want me to talk about tomorrow? And yeah guys, uh, this is gonna be a doozy of a video, okay? <laughs> Probably another long one with a lot of new information, updates to old information on things that you need to know. So sit back and relax, okay? Put your feet up, uh, get your coffee, get your tea, get your water, get your cat, get whatever you need. <laughs> and just relax, okay? A lot of you guys have said you've been missing my daily uploads, but unfortunately I haven't been able to do that just because because I'm kind of scattered all over the place, still selling my house, got to get in and out of the house. It kind of sucks, okay? But until then, just, you know, just just wait for me, okay? <laughs> and also like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, let's get into the needs to know segment. Number one, you need to know that Smooth McGroove has finally returned back to YouTube. Uh, this was actually a couple of days ago and I forgot to mention it to you guys, but Smooth McGroove, if you don't know, is a god with a godlike beard and a godlike cat. He's kind of like me but white and with hair. <laughs> and yeah, he's an OG YouTuber. He's uh, somebody who does like acapellas with himself, usually showing like four or five, six variations of himself, singing uh, video game music, usually old school classic music, but sometimes new school as well. He's an absolute legend. He's been gone for a while. He was on hiatus. He wasn't feeling too well, but he made an update video. He's doing a lot better. So that's good news. He's returning to YouTube. Uh, let's see, number two, and what you need to know, Monster Hunter Rise is coming out this Friday. It's, it's a highly acclaimed game uh, Monster Hunter is a huge franchise and it's coming out this weekend. Apparently the scores have already been released from a lot of places like IGN and them and they've got amazing scores. It seems like it's going to be a great game from the Nintendo Switch. I'm excited to play it as well. So if you guys are a hunter or if this is your first time getting into Monster Huntering, you can come join me. I'll probably be streaming on twitch.tv slash Inferno Omni on Friday. Number three and what I think you guys need to know, Elon Musk, aka the CEO and techno king of Tesla, has basically announced that Bitcoin will be allowed to use to buy Tesla. Because you don't know what Bitcoin is. Bitcoin is a, it's a cryptocurrency. It's a form of currency that's designed around blockchains, essentially. And I'm not going any further into detail, but this is pretty big news for Bitcoin because Bitcoin is now basically allowed to be used as an actual currency to buy more objects. A lot of banks are picking it up. And because of this announcement, the price of Bitcoin probably jumped up like 3,000, 4,000 uh, as of this morning. So yeah. And finally, the last thing in terms of what you guys need to know in gaming news, Scott the Waz is back. After three months of doing nothing, he said it's time to fully start production on the new Scott the Waz episode. Hopefully we'll be back within the next few weeks. And then he tweets here, <laughs> that was quick. And he makes a video here where he talks about the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch is four years old. And I believe this video that he made was like almost like an hour long or something. If you don't know, Scott the Waz is a very popular YouTuber, gaming YouTuber who makes these documentary style videos, very well edited. Uh, great guy, great humor. I highly suggest you watch him. And yeah, guys, that's the needs to know segment for today. Let's get into the news that you guys wanted to talk about. So you guys want to talk about this one first because I know a lot of you guys want to know the update about Dan from Gang Grumps. If you guys don't know Dan from Gang Grumps, there were some allegations about him that were coming out from a Reddit and from Twitter and people thought that Game Grumps and him were getting cancelled due to these allegations that involved potentially uh, doing something bad, aka grooming, <laughs> but it doesn't exist, so I can say it, you know, <laughs> I won't get demonetized, hopefully again. Aiden Dury, and a lot of you guys asked me to talk about this, you guys said literally a day after making the post, the accuser of Dan admits it was fake. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It was a lie. Yeah, I tried to find this person's accounts, but I think it was either locked or I don't know, but or they, maybe they deleted the tweets. But uh, yeah, on March 22nd, uh, the, Ryu Pastel, the person who originally made the tweet that blew up on Twitter said this. It starts, okay, I did some more research last night and came to the conclusion that the Reddit thread really didn't have the most trustworthy evidence aside from maybe the video, but the video doesn't prove anything about grooming. So far, it seems more like Dan is using a groupie for sex, which is still crappy, but I'm not sure if there was any grooming involved. If there's any other evidence around, I would love to see it, but I want to apologize for that thread getting so out of hand yesterday. It's not what I wanted at all. I was just sharing a warning. So, okay, I'm already kind of upset with this reply or whatever, because this person is coming out the gate saying like, actually, it looks like I jumped the gun and tried to cancel somebody on Twitter too fast, too soon. Now, what he did was still kind of bad. Like, I think that you shouldn't be having sexual relationships with somebody who's your fan or with a groupie. That, that's still kind of bad. But like, kind of trying to soften the blow. Like, no, like, <laughs> nah. They continued, but that's no excuse. I'm really sorry for the mess that happened yesterday. I've deleted the thread. If you're mad at me, then that's completely understandable. You have every right to be upset, and I'm sorry. And finally, I'm not trying to say that those girls' experiences are invalid. Uh, 
double exclamation mark. I'm only talking about this specific Reddit thread. I don't know about the other accusations that have apparently happened over the last year. And yeah, uh, Jay tweeted to me and said, Dan's statement about the whole controversy, as well as the poster of the Twitter thread deleting their tweets. We just talked about the poster of the Twitter thread. Uh, but yeah, let's look at this. It says, hi guys, looks like the Game Grumps have something to say about all of this. And let's look at this comment. So yeah, according to Game Revolution, this small article by Paul Tamburo, uh, Game Grumps Dan, I think it's Evidon or Evidon, but he responds to the misconduct allegations, basically saying it's not true. It's 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 not true. So it reads, Game Grumps Dan Evidon has responded to allegations of sexual misconduct, apologizing if his actions had made anyone upset, but saying that the accusations are simply untrue. This follows the publication of a Reddit post allegedly containing in a video when text messages shared between Dan and a female fan, which subsequently saw the YouTube personality and ninja sex party frontman accused of grooming the young fan. Dan, who co-hosts the gaming Let's Play channel Game Grumps alongside Aaron Hansen, was the subject of a Reddit post from R Rant Grumps outlining messages he had reportedly sent to a female fan. The post claimed that the first exchange between Dan and the female fan was when she was 17, with it adding that he had a sexual relationship with her when she was 22. While the post didn't show any legal wrongdoing on Dan's behalf, the claims that he had been in contact with the fan before she had turned 18 led to allegations of grooming, which Dan refutes. And a statement provided to Game Revolution, so they got a statement from Dan himself, went straight to Game Revolution. The YouTuber confirmed that he had a sexual relationship with the fan in question, though stated that it had been one between consenting adults and not exploitative. And Dan's message, and he said this, and I quote, I stand by the fact that any interactions that took place of sexual nature with the person in question were done so when she was 22 years old and we were both consenting adults, Dan said. Continuing, to claim I engaged in any predatory behavior is simply untrue. I have made mistakes in the past and I apologize if my actions or words ever made anyone upset, but those mistakes were never ill-intentioned, exploitative, or illegal in any capacity. And finally, the last paragraph reads, after the allegations began circling social media, the fan allegedly described a noun deleted red post that she didn't believe she had been groomed, but that she felt Dan's actions to be a quote-unquote abuse of power. We talked about this already. And however, the the limited interactions between the pair shared as part of the initial accusations did not suggest any legal wrongdoing on the YouTubers we have. So yeah guys, we can wipe our hands clean of this story. It seems like one of those stories that someone comes out and they try to cancel uh, Dan. They try to cancel Game Grumps. They try to cancel somebody with some information that was definitely 1000% misleading and the person who made the accusations or the girl in question had to follow up and be like, uh, yeah, uh, it, it wasn't actually something that was illegal. I just felt like it was an abuse of power, kind of downgrading a crime from, hey, you could potentially see jail time or we might need to contact the FBI to, okay, maybe you just need some counseling or maybe maybe now you have some trust issues or something like that, but there's nothing. <laughs> One of these things is not like the other. I guess the moral of the story here, again, as always, is to wait to see the whole picture. However, <laughs> no matter how many times we see false allegations or stories come out about people, waiting to hear both sides will never happen on the internet because the internet is just this cancel hungry bandwagon that just wants to destroy people like yeah you'll have a couple of reasonable people like you guys watching my video i know you guys are <laughs> i know you guys are good you know if you're watching my content i know i know you good right but we're the minority and i feel like the majority of twitter and the internet and social media just wants to watch the world burn but yep that's the uh game grumps dan situation in a nutshell all wrapped up i hope you guys feel better about it this is some good news so yeah uh rejoice so another popular topic and one thing that you guys want to talk about is the update about david dobrik uh jesus in the wilderness chair <laughs> i like that twitter name said david dobrik's new apology and the different reactions of youtube versus twitter so if in case you guys don't know david dobrik a uh, big youtuber has almost like 20 million subscribers though he's been losing a lot of subscribers since allegations have come out between him and the vlog squad it's the squad that he used to make vlogs with where they were basically uh engaged in misconduct that affected many women who have basically been coming out and talking about their experiences and they've been pretty heinous involving him and a person named uh, Dom. It all kind of started and snowballed with this prank that went too far with uh, one of his vlog squad members, uh, Seth. Uh, where he had to kiss a girl like the, the story is, is wild like the, the events that have transpired is absolutely wild i'm not going to go into the details of everything that's happened in the past because we'd be talking here forever but what's been happening recently is that david has been losing sponsors left and right he's lost hbo max he's uh he's lost ea games he lost an, an app that he uh, dispo or something like that everyone is dropping him chipotle every single sponsor everywhere has been dropping him for these accusations. He made a two minute apology a few days back 
on one of his like lesser known channels and just about a day ago he made a new apology that was about seven minutes long which was actually on his main channel which people wanted to see in the first place so yeah guys we're not gonna be watching this whole video i'm just gonna point you guys to it the video is titled 3 22 uh has already 6.5 million views uh and uh yeah it's him giving an apology basically and talking more in detail about the situation as you guys can see what's different from this video if you didn't see the first apology is that the like dislike bar is open now and people are able to talk so his first apology which was only two minutes long and in that two minute long video he barely even apologized to to anyone else outside of seth uh, now there's more accusations and i said this i literally said this y'all that if he did not come straight with a proper response then everything would continue to snowball on him and he would have to do this and here we go the prophet omni speaks again so yeah as you guys can see this 531k 43k dislike bar is it's pretty healthy for david this just kind of shows that the people who watch david you know are highly supportive of him on youtube so you know his apologies it, i want to say 43,000 people disliking your video is still bad <laughs> but i've seen worse dislike ratio uh bars so yeah he basically has a lot of strong support and if you kind of like look at the youtube comments i'm, I'm going to go ahead and see what they're saying what's the top youtube comments just so you guys can have a picture the truth tweeted thinking about the victims and how they're feeling right now and everything must be so overwhelming somebody said for everyone saying dom should make an apology that probably wouldn't be appropriate he needs to go to jail uh someone said who else didn't get this in their recommended this person said trisha has told people this for months and everybody called her crazy for it speaking of which trisha and h3h3 have already been talking about this more as you guys look on the right hand side i don't know if you can see it but uh you can see philip defranco he's already talked about this apology and what it means and you can see that in front of me is the h3 podcast both ethan klein and um, trisha payas are also talking about it but apparently there's also more footage and more allegations what, it, what appears to keep happening is that more and more information just keeps coming out like as this guy comes out to apologize for things that happened with him or his involvement with the vlog squad or dom more footage comes out there are things that he's been saying in this apology which we will not watch because i don't want to get demonetized because he talks about some sensitive stuff plus it's like seven minutes long so i'm not going to do that to y'all but apparently there are things that he says in this apology video that got debunked like the day of like <laughs> there were people who were basically saying uh that's not true that's not true that's not true that's not true and here's the receipts so a lot of people are kind of like okay is this another bogus apology from a pr that he had to do is it coming from the heart is it sincere yada 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 but yeah guys i did watch the video and it was a much better apology than the first one i'll bet like i'm not gonna sit here and rate it like <laughs> like we'll sit here and rate it from a one to a ten but it was better than the first one but i think any apology was better than the first one the first one was just garbage doo-doo butter but what's happening now is that there are people who are still pissed off at david and feel like he still has not taken accountability and there's kind of like a war of people who support him and saying like hey he apologized twice and uh when are you going to like forgive him you guys just want to cancel him into infinity you, you don't want to forgive david dobrik you just want to keep you know taking the pitchfork and stabbing into his back and twisting essentially and there's the other side basically saying that david dobrik's apology only basically came because he was backed into a corner it's a pr move it's all fabricated it's crocodile tears there's two different sides of this entire situation you type david dobrik on twitter uh this girl 232,000 likes david dobrik said he couldn't wrap his head around the fact that his childhood friend was an assaulter and that's literally the problem men will ignore and discredit women but won't hold their besties accountable smiley face i i'm not a fan of the, the smiley face i agree with what she's saying but i mean the, the smiley face seems kind of just snide but whether i like her tired or not it doesn't even matter she has a point i do think when it comes to men and and men culture we do have this culture where we kind of have each other's backs the the the, the man code or something ever you want to call it like you just you stick up for your friends whether you're actually you're a woman or a man the idea is that you got your friends back no matter what but i think it's been more stigmatized within men to basically always have uh, a guy's back regardless which has also i guess simultaneously been suppressing women especially in situations like this where you can't have your man's back when he's out here doing terrible things like this or you can't turn a blind eye to your best friends or your guys doing terrible things you got to hold them accountable otherwise uh, women are going to continue to get suppressed and get hurt and it's going to create this culture for women to not feel safe in. like example that i see a lot of people use is like if you're out with your guys and you're out at a club or a bar or something like that and one of your boys is getting drunk or tipsy or whatever and he starts acting inappropriately towards women maybe touching girls or slap some asses or doing something that he should not be doing sometimes in those situations if you're the friend 
they won't call them out on it. In fact, they might even support it or laugh, but they won't be like, hey, dog, no, stop, no, wrong, no. And it's got to be an aggressive approach because, you know, women can't do it because they're fear of getting attacked. They might have to just ignore it because they're just like, okay, hopefully he doesn't hurt me because he's a man. He might be bigger than me. But the men, <laughs> your friends, have to hold you accountable. And I agree with that statement. I do think men need to hold men accountable in those situations. At the same time, you know, when it comes to like friends, childhood friends, whether you're a guy or a girl, I think everyone has like kind of like tinted glasses and everyone has a, a bias. You know, like everyone's like, yeah, he's my he's my best friend. I know this guy. I, I, I He wouldn't do anything wrong. Like I trust him. And when you have your trust in somebody and you have that bias, then yes, that's going to carry over as well. So there's the idea of men protecting men, but sometimes there's also the idea of you just having a good friend that you want to believe. You know, if they say no, you want to believe them because they're your friend and you trust them and you don't know the other person. So it's a there's there's two things happening here. It's not just black or white. But yeah, anyway, back to the dispute and what you guys wanted to talk about, which was how Twitter feels about David Dobrik's apology versus how YouTube does. And basically how on YouTube, he, he has more support, you know, basically more accepting of his apology. Whereas like on Twitter, this person said, friendly reminder that David Dobrik released his second apology video when brands started to drop him. If he wanted to be sincere, he would have released an apology video in 2019 when the victim came forward, not when the brands started to drop him. This person said, it's actually sad about how quick y'all are to switch up. Davis Dobrik's apology should have happened in 2019 when he was first made aware of the assault. I feel like y'all were just waiting to forgive him and it makes me so angry. This guy said, David Dobrik never apologized when the victims came forward, but he did when the sponsors pulled out. This isn't about remorse, it's about money. And this is the last thing I'll read. Somebody posted this on their YouTube one, but it said, so it took Scotty's failed video, Jeff's failed video, David's first failed apology video, a bunch of episodes of Frenemies, and other commentators making videos on the situation, an article on Insider, lots of words being filtered, thousands of subscribers lost, and a lot of lost brand deal sponsorships to finally get an apology video that seems sincere. So yeah guys, that's the whole Twitter versus YouTube and how people feel about David's apology in a nutshell. I do believe there are two sides to it again. I'm going to try to be neutral, okay? I'm not, I'm not supporting David Dobrik, okay? Don't don't ever put that on right, all right? After everything I've seen, I ain't, I, uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> in terms of the people who feel like David Dobrik's apology was too late and or inauthentic, I, I agree with them. Like it's, it's hard to tell now if he's being serious or not because of the timing, because it probably needed to be done a lot earlier. Obviously, it, it doesn't feel as authentic. And to be honest, I think he was actually tearing up or crying in the video in a little bit. And I, to me personally, when it comes to apologies, uh, when someone has done something and they, they got to be held accountable, I can't I can't do with the crime because that for me feels like an appeal to emotion. Like he, it might be sincere. It could be truly, truly how he feels and he's truly truly apologetic but i feel like you know tears is a <laughs> it's an appeal to emotion whether you're doing it intentionally or unintentionally and it's it's a very strong tool and <laughs> even if you're not even trying to use the tool it's a very strong tool so yes all of these people saying that his apology came as a result of all of these things are correct However, I do think that's actually just the natural process of the situation, right? Like, you know, if accusations start coming out and then day after day after day after day, you know, accusation, cancellation, accusation, sponsorship draw, accusation, accusation, after all these things are happening, then yes, obviously this is going to be the sequence of events that lead to the apology because everyone's talking about it and everyone's backing out at the same time. Like, you actually cannot avoid the sequence of events at this point in time. <laughs> Unless what they're trying to say is that if it wasn't for the sponsors leaving, if it wasn't for the commentators making the comments, if it wasn't for all the publicity in the news, then he would have never made that apology. And in that case, they're, they're, they're correct. At the same time, and again, this is just a little bit of devil's advocate, but like, when do we, when do we forgive? You know, like when do we, and it's not my place to forgive David Dobrik, like, I don't care. Like, I can't, oh, I forgive you, David Dobrik, for the things that you did to other people or the things that you've heard. No, I can't forgive him for nothing. But it seems like, when, when does an apology become, like, acceptable? You know what I'm saying? Like, where, where if you apologize to your audience on behalf of the things that you've done, what does it take, I guess, to for people to be like, all right, that's fine. Because I think there's another side of people who are worried, or not even worried, but they just think that people are just basically blasting David Dobrik into infinity and they will never forgive him no matter what he does or say. And yeah, I do feel like there's a large group of people who are like, hey, man, you need to apologize. You should have made an apology video. But if you do come out with that apology video, you still won't be forgiven. <laughs> and no matter what happens, your apology is still garbage. Like, like, that's where I'm trying to figure out is when the apology is not garbage. <laughs> or when someone who doesn't like someone does something and they apologize, and they're like, oh, okay, actually, this was a good apology video. There are some people who will never come to that conclusion. And even after requesting an apology, they'll just continue to say, yes, still garbage,
still don't forgive you. Make another apology video. You still didn't do this, this, and that. So it's, there's two sides that's happening here. For me, I don't really sympathize for David Dobrik. Okay, I don't, I don't have any sympathy for him. Like he, he, he's kind of, you know, this is, this is karma. He's kind of dug his own grave, being around certain people, making the certain actions that he's done. So I'm not going to sit here and sympathize this guy for what is currently happening to him because this situation arose because of his own actions. However, let me know how you guys feel about the situation. Okay, do you guys feel like the apology was, was whack? Do you feel like David Dobrik is redeemable? Um, what do you think? I'm just curious, bro. This is wild. Another big, huge story, bro. Like, so, okay, if you guys don't know, then this is tweeted by M. Kus, kus, kus. But yeah, a lot of you guys told me about this. Maximilian Muss's YouTube video addressing the video that critical, moist critical Charlie made about him. Guys, if you guys don't know about this Maximilian Muss story, this was absolutely wild. So I want to say like several weeks ago, there was a channel called Maximilian Muss, and that channel had apparently gotten deleted. The reason why it had gotten deleted is because moist critical Charlie, aka a really popular uh, YouTube commentator, you guys probably know him and he, yeah he made a video basically exposing this guy this guy was basically being exposed for being incredibly problematic and toxic to levels you cannot imagine things like doxing things like using his discord to, to threaten uh twitch people into to doing things holding them ransom and saying if you don't do something they're going to cause violence or hurt you or hurt your family there's been multiple accusations and things that are happening in his discord that that revolves children it's it's really bad and when you hear the word maximilian must if you went to his youtube video it was a bunch of like call of duty videos or something where he just does something toxic and he's just being a bully online or something like that but yeah Charlie called him out and then afterwards his channel which looked like it got deleted or removed by YouTube made maybe he just got privatized because apparently there's a video now with Maximilian Muzz addressing Charlie. So yeah guys here's his YouTube channel and it's got 1.43 million subscribers and doing numbers you know he hasn't made a video in almost a month and then about a day ago he made a video that says YouTube allows potentially life ruining slander on their platform so yeah his channel is back uh looking at the like dislike ratio bar there is a uh, 15,000 dislikes 8.1 likes it's a 24 minute video where he basically is going over this is the worst youtuber he's talking about moist critical and he's basically snapping back at critical and if you don't even see right here on the bottom right <laughs> less than 18 hours ago critical already said the worst youtuber is back and he's already responded in his own 16 minute and 38 video this is a lot of information there's a lot of topics and i'm not exactly sure how i can cover this with you guys maybe i need to find tldrs for you maybe i'll do that because there's no way i'm sitting here and watching a 24 minute video with you guys and and a follow-up 16 minute video with you guys either I'm, I'm not doing that not here however he did pin a comment which i imagine is a tldr of his video so i'll go ahead and read this for you guys because I'm, I'm guessing this is his own tldr that he wants people to to read if they don't watch the video which i'm not going to watch it says critical has allegedly known about the cp stuff for years but does not say anything until he's rated question mark do you find that to be a likely story anyone that doesn't find that to be a red flag is missing some brain cells he literally shows fake discord screenshots as proof does it make any sense for him to make a video claiming i defend cp not show any of it and then only show it 30 days later huge red flag it makes no sense plus it's easy to fake discord dm so, all right, I'm already in this and I don't even feel like reading the rest because like, <laughs> like, bro, like the first sentence already, it seems like that he just told on himself. He literally said Critical has allegedly known about the CV stuff for years. It's like right then and there is basically acknowledging that it does exist. <laughs> Like, wh I, why would I care about the rest of this entire sentence or statement or paragraph if you're kind of just already admitting like, yeah, I, 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 he, he knew about it and he hasn't said anything? And then like, bro, wait, you, are you admitting that he's right? So yeah, I skipped these two paragraphs. You guys can read it, but it's it, I, I don't think it's, it makes any sense. He said, I skimmed through most of his video, but it's insanely disingenuous. If you are on Discord browser, you can literally right click any message and change the text of what it says. Please go try this for yourself and you'll see how easy it is. The truth of this all is I rated him and caught him slipping making a huge horrible false statement and now he's doubling down continuously and repeatedly the drama is truly over though i never expected someone with 8 million subs to sink this low but hey he's five foot six so he's used to being low regular uploads return in april well, dang bro okay so you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna come at him because of his height dog like moist critical is a god it don't matter how short he is bro like you better you gotta chill with i'm i'm a little bit of a charlie fan so i i 
kind of like my defensive modes have just jumped up like Arr! but yeah guys i did watch this video the worst youtuber is back that basically moist critical talks about and yeah he basically essentially says like this is his last time that he's going to be talking about this entire situation he's completely pissed off about everything everybody in the comments as you can see the like ratio is much more different 253k to 2.3k but he basically goes over and debunks literally almost everything that this guy says and basically says that his own community the people that maximilian must was close with the, his own circle came to charlie to basically say that these things were happening it's not like charlie was like you know being a csi detective and coming in and trying to cancel this man or something like that on some leafy stuff no no everyone came to him with this information and he presented it and the people who came to him were people who were in close contact with maximilian musk but yeah guys if you kind of want the full story if you want to watch the maximilian musk video 24 minutes long go ahead go ahead if you want the full story of what he's saying because charlie is responding to it back in this video and i will also say to watch this one as well again i don't want this video to be three hours long so i can't sit here and watch it and even if i did i'm not trying to get tagged by susan <laughs> and ethered off the internet for talking about things that i that i can't talk about because I, I need to make money but yeah anyway guys that's the entire situation maximilian musk is back and and charlie has made a video responding to it and everybody in the comments is pissed off and basically saying i think some ordinary gamers said he was like a tumor to the to the community and to be honest like the, the from what i've seen i kind of like high key agree like there's a lot of evidence stacked against this guy and i'm not a huge fan of his his rhetoric or his content how he speaks and all the things that's come out some of the things that he's admitted to it, it doesn't seem right i'm curious to see how this saga continues if something more happens i'll let you guys no. Hey, yeah, guys, this one's really weird, okay? A servile said an artist said she fixed a drawing of Knuckles by making his skin tone darker. And it's a post made by this girl and said, you can see down here on the bottom, it's basically Knuckles and Tails and Sonic, and they have their tones. And she said, I fixed it for you. And she made the, the, the human version of Knuckles black. That was that was the difference. That was the fix. Just 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 made her black. And <laughs> this is a, it's a funny story. I know some of you guys are watching this. You're seeing the segment. You're like, should I skip? Should I just go to another tab? Look, this is absolutely hilarious. It has shades of like that whole Animal Crossing uh, drama where uh, someone was basically saying that you can't wear like buns like these space buns on animal crossing games this also has shades of like the nesta thing that happened in the pokemon community about shading and i keep saying shades but you know i'm using that ironically unironically but yeah the, the situation is absolutely hilarious i've read a little bit into it so far so let's go a little bit deeper so before we go into this loophole this twitter loophole because guys i'm telling you sit back buckle up because it's <laughs> i'm telling you like you know you guys know when i can't keep it together that it's it's absolutely wild okay you guys know knuckles from you know sonic series knuckles is a i think it's a echidna i don't know how to say i don't know if i'm pronouncing that correctly i mispronounce everything echidna echidna but uh yeah he is not white or black however twitter is basically saying that there are implications that he is white or black this this animal that is being implied to be <laughs> an actual race which is white or black and the fight that is happening on twitter is that there's a group of people who believe that knuckles has black ancestry because uh, in the game if you go back into his roots it goes back to the aztec temple so he's supposed to be more of a a, a, a colored character uh not a a light-skinned character versus other people are like are you kidding me like have you heard his voice he's played by a white actor and yeah it's for some reason guys the internet is always capable of turning something into race but when it comes to video games and video game characters even more so so let's look into this because if you guys don't know knuckles was trending all night last night with thousands of tweets thousands okay knuckles <laughs> was trending <laughs> so yeah for the most part a lot of people are using the knuckles trend hashtag to kind of just show off their fan art like hey knuckles is trending by the way here's my fan art but if you got to go down and scroll down a little bit you can see what some people are basically saying about the situation this person said just going to say it knuckles is supposed to be inspired by various indigenous cultures from south america at least his ancestors are in sonic adventure as someone of similar native ancestry you're not racist if you draw human knuckles as white or just with lighter skin and I don't, <laughs> I don't know what I'm looking at, 
but it makes me laugh. And uh, yeah, but I guess this is this is his his origin story. Jenny said Knuckles is trending, but just because Sonic fans are insisting he's white, guys, his ancestors live in an Aztec temple. This account called Semi Frequent Sonic Facts said Knuckles the Echidna was originally created with. Please don't blast me if I'm saying Echidna wrong. You know what? I'm just gonna look it up now so you guys don't get mad at me. Okay. Echidna. Echidna. I was saying it right. Echidna. Echidna. Okay, I was saying it right. Knuckles the Echidna was originally created with the inspiration from the Rastafarian flag, even intending to have a Jamaican accent at one point. Okay. Uh, starting with Sonic Adventure, Knuckles' lineage appears to have been shifted towards a more Mesoamerican descent. So we have here your boy Knuckles with the same color of the Rastafarian flag. You got Knuckles notes then I presume Sonic isn't allowed to play his own game, Mon. So what? Knuckles was supposed to be Jamaican? <laughs> There's no... Maybe his hair is supposed to be like dreadlocks. Is that... Bro, you learn something new every day on this channel, man. I really like this tweet. Uh, this girl said, the black community really can't have no peace. Some white savior editing fan art of human knuckles to be black, which is going to be thrown back at the black community as our fault and labeled as black washing and the OG artist is racist oh god you can't make this up this happens all the time where where i think you know somebody who's not black gets offended for us and then you know then what happens is after they get offended you know the art community starts becoming completely pissed off and then the actual races come out in order to to punish uh these kind of views and thoughts and process they actually start making racially insensitive <laughs> art where they make someone like completely dark skin or they'll they'll make someone look like a monkey like they did with nessa it's like the circle of life where somebody comes in and gets offended on our behalf and then the actual races come out and then actually make offensive stuff, but claim that they're fighting back to make fun of. Uh, it's it's a never ending circle. I like this one as well. This girl Nakuma said, the whole Knuckles controversy is just this. You poor, ignorant, stupid fool who has internalized white supremacy and racism. Don't worry, I'll fight the good fight for you since you are obviously too brainwashed to know better. I'll be offended on your behalf. And let me just say this too. Okay, let me let me clear up this misconception, okay? To all my, if any of you guys are in here and you're white, okay? <laughs> I'm talking to you, yeah, I'm talking to you. And if you're in here and you're white and you see, you know, injustice, this racial injustice you see you see me you see you see black people being you know hurt I, we love it when you stand up for us we, we need support we need unity we need unity within all races and we love it however there are some white people however that are a little bit more offended than us you know what i'm saying like when something is not racially kind of driven but then someone turns it into something racially driven and we're like whoa wait 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 we 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 wasn't offended. That's not something that makes us upset. But now it becomes about us. And now we're kind of like stuck in the middle of this, this one person who's trying to defend us over something we're not offended against. And these other people who are basically saying that they're wrong, but then that direction's getting pointed at us. It's like, it's like, I appreciate it. I do. I appreciate you guys wanting to look out for us, but talk to a black person first. Like before you get offended for us, discuss it. Have conversations with your fellow black friends. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and ask and say hey are you offended by this are, are people in question inquire instead of just jumping off the handle and you know virtue signaling over a race that you don't even stand for it, it, you're not showing support and solidarity it sounds more like you're just kind of complaining for the sake of complaining and using using black people as a podium for you to fight out against and lash against someone else like i appreciate the enthusiasm but it's misguided anyway yeah in my opinion uh, knuckles is red and uh, if you want to make him into a fan art and you want to turn him into a white person, I don't care. If you want to turn him into a black person, I don't care. If you want to turn him into a blue person, I do not care. <laughs> and that's all I feel about this situation. All right, guys, that's all I have for this video. If you made it to the end, just as a reminder, if you didn't leave a like before, could you leave a like now? And again, it really helps out the channel. Uh, subscribe if you guys haven't already. And again, if you made it this far, I, 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 that means that you kind of like watch my content and you enjoyed it and like it. Can you do me a favor? If you if you have a Patreon, if you want to support me on Patreon, I think I want to get to the point on this channel where I can talk about whatever I want, anything that I want, however I want. And I save this for the end of the video because I know only the real ones will come to the end of the video. I'm really going to try to push up my Patreon because if we get enough support on the Patreon, then I can have no bars, no limits, no hoes talking about whatever I want on here because if I get demonetized, 
it's okay. <laughs> uh, I guess I am becoming a, per a person who, you know, criticizes things that happen on the internet. We talk about sensitive things from time to time, and I don't want to hold back because I am holding back. Like right now, I'm holding back <laughs> everything I can because I don't really have sponsors. I don't have any other sources of revenue. But if you guys help me out on it, that would help me out a lot. And with enough support, I can go ham. We can go actually crazy, crazy. You guys think right now this is me? Nah, we can we can go in a little bit deeper, and I can say how I really feel. But yeah, if you guys made it in the video, thanks so much. Again, I really appreciate the support. Thanks for watching it all i'm glad you guys are liking the long videos i will see you guys soon you guys take it easy stay safe floss brush your teeth and have a good one